So what are some additional scales that you'll see in a rating scale? Advanced, proficient, partially proficient, needs development, exceeds standards, meets standards, progressing towards standards. Are these all going from either nothing to a lot? You see how it's a graduated scale? Never, sometimes, usually, always. And the rating scale that you've been familiar with most of your life are your grades. What is the rating scale that our grades are on? What's the lowest possible? F. F, right? And what is the highest possible? A. A. And what is assigned to those grades? I say this all the time in my class. What's a C grade? Average, what's an A? Above. Way above average, right? I think it's more scientific than that. So what's a B? If C is average, a B is? That's still above average. And, C, and an A is exceeds expectations, basically, right? So if you don't exceed the expectation, if you don't go way above average, do you deserve an A? They know I don't deserve an A. You deserve a C, right? You did an average amount of work. That's how a rating scale works. See how our grading system has all messed up the grading scale? <laughs> At my kids' school, they don't have grading as far as F to an A. They have a zero to a five. A zero is the, kid, the child put forth no effort. Okay, you see how it's a really neat way to think about it? One is the child doesn't understand but put forth effort. Is there a distinction between those two measurements? Yeah. A five is the child understands the concept well enough to teach it. A four is the child understands the concepts. What's the difference between a child understanding the concept and the child understands the concept well enough to teach it? You can explain it as all words to teach it. What's, what is harder, understanding or being able to explain it? Being able to explain it, that's really hard, isn't it? So these are different types of rating scale. This is another, this is a rating scale that I absolutely adore. It's, it's also used in my third grader's classroom. So if a teacher asks a question, have you ever asked a question to third graders? Sometimes you get, yeah, but my dog, did you hear about my dog yesterday? Does that have anything to do with what's happening? No, not at all. So she uses this finger system because sometimes if you give them an opening, if you say, do you understand the concept? And they'll say, yes, and my dog ate his poop yesterday. And then all the third graders start talking about their dogs eating their poop. So she uses this type of learning scale. So do you understand what I'm saying? Zero is I don't understand. One is I understand some but have some questions. Two is understand and can do it by myself. Three is understand and can help a friend. So you see how that's a different type of rating scale, but it's really cool. So here we have what is the scale on this rating scale right here? What's the scale? It starts from unsatisfactory and it goes to outstanding. What is the scale from here? One to six, what's the scale from here? We have two, right? A one, two, there's a five down there. And you can have it on a rating scale, you can assign a numerical value, and you can also have descriptors. So rating scales are very versatile in how you choose to set them up. There are certain parameters that we're gonna go over, but it's really open to what your use of the rating scale is. So what are some of the advantages? It's fast and convenient. More choices than a checklist, right? A checklist just measures if it is yes or no, there or not there, present or not present, right? Does a rating scale measure more than that? You see skills advancing along a continuum. So if you continue to do the rating scale and you see the behavior is not present, emerging and then present, do you see a growth? And that's what we see when we take a look at a DRDP, because a DRDP is a rating. You can revisit over time to see progress. If we revisit the rating scale to see progress, does it need to be exactly the same rating scale? Yes, there you go. All right, so disadvantages, the details are lost because it is a open or closed method. Closed. It's selective and subjective, right? 
when you're putting something on a continuum, it can be very subjective, even if you're measuring your own pain. Last year, my husband broke his back. I had to go with him to all of his doctor's appointments because his pain tolerance is right here. So when the doctor is sitting there examining his broken back and broken hip and broken ribs and asking what his pain is, a 1 to 10, and he's saying a 2, but he's kind of going like this, said no, it's a 9 for a normal person, right? Have you ever met that, those type of people that their pain tolerance is like way up here and you're going, that really has got to hurt a lot more? Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's subjective, even something like that. Um, creating a reading scale. So if you're creating a reading scale, you're identifying what the scale is measuring. Okay, so you have to figure out what is the information I want to know. Determine what is the most significant for assessment on the scale, again. What information are you trying to understand? So often, teachers will choose these rating scales, but is it really telling the information that you want to know? Again, this is one of the reasons I don't rely on massive midterms to tell me what you know. If you get a 60% on the midterm, it could indicate to me you're just not good at memorizing facts, but you know the information wonderfully, okay? So you have to make sure the rating scale is truly measuring what you want it to measure. I don't feel that massive cumulative exams measure what I want to measure. I want to know that if you get a problem like one we just looked at, in the real world, you can do it. You still have a lot of work to do, but you're getting that. <laughs> Select the type of scale that is most appropriate. When you create a rating scale or you find a rating scale, typically you're going to have about three to seven rating positions. If we have less than three rating positions, what's it called? Less than three, it means there's how many? Less than three is, what's this number? Two. two. And if there's only two choices, what does it become? A checklist. See, you guys are doing it. So if there's less than three, it's a checklist. So that's why we have that three. If there's more than seven, we start to get these little minute measurement details. So we get, if we go back here, let's look at an example for a second. So if we had seven along this continuum, unsatisfactory, um, a little bit less unsatisfactory, a little bit less than that unsatisfactory, fair, satisfactory, more satisfactory, you see how it becomes much more difficult? You might as well write an anecdotal record, right? It takes away from that easily getting the information.